I've had these particular shrimps in the water for over a month now. And as I add more shrimp in, I want to be able to identify the originals. I want to be able to know how long I've been able to keep these shrimp alive. So I want to mark them. Now the Procure Badass Bait dye I think is going to work just fine. Now dyeing sand shrimp for bait is nothing new. Lots of people have been doing it for a long time. In fact, I was talking to a gentleman the other day who used to own the tackle shop and he would dye sand shrimp to sell. And he said that the Procure Badass Bait dye was like crack to him. It really fired him up and made him lively. I thought that, that was interesting. I thought it might kill him. <laughs> but he said this really made him, you know, mean. So I asked Steve Lynch, uh, the manager of Procure, uh, about that. And he said, yeah, it's the salt in, in the dye. And I said, oh, okay, well, now that makes sense. You know, if you take a shrimp out of the salt water and his body's craving salt, maybe, well, then if you can give him a shot of salt, it seems like it would liven him up. That's what we're going to talk about when we're done marking this guy right here. So I pulled one of the shrimp out, and it's been a few minutes, just kind of letting them dry a little bit. Because if they're a little bit dry when you dye them, it's going to work a lot better. Kind of wipe the water off them. I've got a little dish of the dye that I've just poured in here and get in. Now, when you're dyeing shrimp, the thing is the outer shell here, the carapace, the outer shell is, is real hard and it doesn't dye real well. You really have to soak them to get a, this to turn bright green. But the bottom side, where all the like hair-like fibers are on the end of the tail and all through in the bottom here, that will turn a nice bright green. So I don't want to kill this guy because I don't think this is going to be good for him. It might fire him up, but in the long run, I don't want to get a bunch of this dye in my water and, and uh, I don't, I don't want to kill the shrimp. So I'm just going to dye the tip of the tail here. Got some nice hairs on the end there that are really going to dye bright green. So I'll just get hold of him and just stick that right down in the cup. And you can see how that is just bright green now. So what I want to do is just wipe some of that off and kind of let it dry for just a minute. So that'll be good. And then I've got this is just a dish of water I pulled out of the tank there and I'm just gonna kind of rinse it off because I don't want to get this dye into the tank. It, it might be harmless, I just don't know. So I'm just gonna kind of rinse that off. So now this tail is just a little bit green on the tips especially right there and I'll be able to identify it. Hey, hey, ow, ooh. These guys, you know, when you pull them out of a cup, uh, you know, for uh, you bought it in a tackle shop, they don't usually pinch you, but these lively ones that come out of here, yeah, they'll get you. <laughs> all right, so that one I'll be able to tell always with that green tail that that's one of the originals. I'm going to put them back here, put them back in the water, and he should be good. So the question is then, what happens to a saltwater animal like a fish? going from salt water to fresh water. What is it that kills it? What's exactly the process that's going on there? Well, it all comes down to Mother Nature's balance. Mother Nature is all about balance. And if you take a salt water animal and put it in fresh water, you're throwing it out of balance. And this is basically what happens. Now, all animals are made of cells, right? So cells want to be in an isotonic stage. That's Mother Nature's perfect situation. And what's not so perfect is a hypertonic stage or a hypotonic stage. In order to remain in that isotonic stage, cells have to be able to bring in or release the right amount of salt water or fresh water to, to maintain that balance. So if you take a saltwater fish, which has less salt in its body than its surrounding environment, the salt water, what happens is a hypotonic situation. The, the, the water will flood into the cell, make it expand, and it, I suppose eventually it'll just explode, which is not a, a pretty sounding way to go. So the cells cannot handle all that fresh water being permeated into them through osmosis. Now a freshwater fish, on the other hand, that's going to be a little bit of an opposite scenario. Now think about bacon and uh, salting fish to preserve it, salting anything to preserve it, you're taking that salt 
packing it around whatever you want to preserve to draw the moisture out of it, to draw the water out. So that's what happens to a freshwater fish when you put it in salt water. The cells become hypertonic, meaning the, the salt is drawn out of the cell and it, the fish basically dies of dehydration. That's another ugly way to go. So if we're gonna keep fish alive in captivity, they need to be kept where their cells are in a nice isotonic situation. So what about these sand shrimp? Exactly how much fresh water can they handle? Well, I don't really know. I, I know that in their natural environment, there's a lot of fluctuation in the salinity levels of the water. And I, I did had a comment from somebody that said they were finding sand shrimp way up a river to where during the incoming tide, it might be some brackish water up there, but during the outflow, there's just gonna be pretty much just fresh water. So I, I really don't know what the answer to that is. If any of you do know exactly how much fresh water and how long a sand shrimp can survive in fresh water, I'd be interested to know. I suppose there is a way to find out, but you know, I'm not really into torturing animals, but I would be, uh, I'm very curious about that. So if you know, please comment down below and uh, let me know what you think about that. If you like this video, please like it and share it and be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll be talking back at you soon.